Coming up, a simple explanation of public key cryptography on Ask the Tech Guy. Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Whether they're working in the office or remotely, visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you by LastPass. LastPass manages every entry point to your business, so you can mitigate risk in office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Hey everybody, Leo Laporte, Ask the Tech Guy. This is a question that comes from many different people. I won't single any one of you out, but a lot of people ask all the time. We talked earlier about using PGP to encrypt your email, but PGP and, and in fact web browsing and a lot of other technologies these days use something called public key cryptography. And one of the questions I get all the time is, well, what is public key cryptography? I'm going to attempt in the next five minutes to explain it in a way that's easy and understandable. But to start, we have to talk about the early days of cryptography. What is cryptography? It's a secret message. You probably did it as a kid. You write something down and you scramble it up and then you send it to a friend and only your friend can read it. That's called symmetric key cryptography. The earliest way of doing this was something, uh, it's, I'll tell you how old it is, it's called a Caesar cipher because it was used by Julius Caesar. Uh, it's an alphabetic cipher. The alphabet, A through Z, you assign each letter a number, 1 through 26, and then you scramble it up. What you're doing is a transposition cryptography or transposition cipher is actually a better name for it. What you get is a scrambled up message and you can easily then take a transposition cipher, write it down and transpose it. There's two problems with this. The first problem is it's easy to decrypt. You don't even need a computer to do this. In fact, it's so easy that many newspapers for years, they might even still, I don't know, does anybody get a newspaper, have crypto challenges in the newspaper where they give you an encrypted message and they say, see if you can figure it out. I used to love to do these as a kid. It's a very simple process. You do it by letter frequency. Turns out the English language, the most used letter is, you probably know this, right? E and then T and then A. In fact, I remember the entire sequence by the name Etienne Schurdlou, E-T-A-I-E-T-A-O-I-N-S-H-R-D-L-U. -E -E Those are the most used letters in order. Typically, what you'll do is go through a cipher. If there's enough text, you can say, well, the most commonly used letter here is Q. That must be E. And then you can go backwards from that. It doesn't take too much to figure it out, especially if in the cipher they've separated words because two-letter words and three-letter words, it's pretty easy to figure out what those are. They occur very often. Things like an, at, and the. It's not hard to figure these out. So that's problem number one. It doesn't take a genius to decrypt a uh, cipher like that. Problem, and by the way, with computers, you could brute force it. You could do it in milliseconds, very fast. Problem number two is it's what we call a symmetric key cipher. You use the same key to decrypt it as you use to encrypt it. And the problem lies in that you need to transmit not only the message, Julius Caesar would send one courier with the encrypted message, but you also have to transmit the key. Otherwise, your recipient won't know what to do with it. So he'd send a separate courier with the key. Now, if both couriers are captured by the enemy, it's all over. It's easily decrypted. So you can see two big flaws with this kind of cipher. And that's because it's a symmetric key cipher. More modern ciphers are what we call public key ciphers. There's two keys. Public key crypto is a very clever mathematical strategy to generate two different keys. Each is a prime number. Each is a factor of one large number. You don't need to know how they create these keys. It's just math. But the point of the generation is it's a one-way process. You can't go in the other direction very easily. 
Someday, maybe computers will be fast enough to brute force public key crypto. But if your key is long enough, 128 bits or even better, 256 bits, it's going to take a massive computer, many millions of years to decrypt it. So we're not going to worry about that side of it. But this solves the problem of symmetric key crypto because there's two keys. I can publish and give you a public key. Everybody can have it because the public key is a one-way key. All it does is encrypt. It doesn't decrypt. Does that make sense? It turns a message into gobbledygook, but it can't read the key. So in order for me, if you want to send me a message, all I need to do is publish, as I have, my public key. You can use software to use that public key, scramble up a message, and send it to me. You can't even read that message because it's a one-way transition. That message now can only be read by somebody who holds the private key. And that's the most important part of public key crypto is that private key you need to keep safe. You need to put it somewhere. No one can get it. And you even keep it more safe usually by adding a passphrase or a long password to it. So even if they were to get it, they'd still have to figure out what it is by using the passphrase. So this is a huge step forward because instead of having to send a courier, two couriers, one with the message and one with the decryption key, I just send one courier and I shout it out to the world. Here's my public key. You can send me a message. All you have to do is encrypt it with this public key because the public key can't be used to decrypt, only encrypt. It can't be used to decrypt, only encrypt. So I have published my public key. When you use public key crypto, you publish your public key and you keep your private key safe. And if somebody sends you a message, which they've encrypted using your freely available public key, you use your private key to decrypt it and then you can read it. This is a clever strategy. First figured out uh, not so long ago, about 50 years ago, and now used everywhere. If you use Signal, the encryption messenger, that uses public key crypto. If you use PGP or G GPG to encrypt messages, that uses public key crypto. When you surf the web and you use HTTPS, TLS, that's public key crypto. And in fact, effectively, Almost all the cryptography used these days is public key. Certainly the cryptography used to send messages is public key because it works so well and it's so hard to break. Um, I think that makes sense. I hope I helped you. I didn't even bring in Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice because most of the time when they explain this, they do. They bring in these people. And I've seen <laughs> Cloud, Cloudflare has a very complicated explanation of public key crypto that involves a chest with a lock that only goes one way or not the other. And... I don't think it's that complicated. Just remember this. You're going to generate a key pair when you first set this up. There's the public key you give the world, the private key you keep to yourself, and now you can be sent messages. Similarly, if you want to send an encrypted message to somebody, all you have to do is say, what's your public key? In fact, usually you don't even have to ask them directly. Most people who've set up a public key have published it on the key servers. There's key servers all over the world. You type in their email address. It'll say, oh, here's their public key, and you can send them an encrypted message. In fact, why don't you try it? Download GPG tools uh, and, and search for leo at leoville.com. That's my public key, and you can send me an encrypted message. If you do it right, I'll send your response back. And for extra points, attach your public key to that message, I'll even encrypt my message back to you. So that's public key crypto. Not too complicated. I hope you understand. And by the way, our sponsor LastPass uses strong encryption exactly this way to protect you. Only you can decrypt your LastPass password vault. No one else. LastPass is key to protecting your remote workforce. They can be a real security risk. LastPass lets you transition easily from in-office to in-home. It enables IT to remain in complete control over which employees are accessing what, no matter where. Employees can securely share passwords across teams. And it reduces the risk of phishing schemes by never auto-filling passwords on suspicious websites. Get simple security across every access point with LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to know more. LastPass.com slash twit. That's it for the Ask the Tech Guy this week. Thanks for joining me. If you've got a question, email askthetechguy at twit.tv. Maybe you'll be next week. See you then. Stumped on a nasty tech conundrum? Email askthetechguy at twit.tv.